this is one's man, one man's collection and he willed it to the Historical Society? Wow. And he displayed them all at his residences, probably. Well, his residences, yeah, down at the end, you can see a picture at the old far end. You'll see a picture on the right of him in his apartments around his lamps. He bought his first lamp for $12.50. 1935, nobody wanted them. They were totally out of style. And then he started building his collection. So on this floor, we have a lot of the samples of really some of the most special mm. examples. And upstairs there's a lot of information on the which is very interesting. There are all kinds of drawers you can kind of pull out and videos and things. Oh, wow. Yeah. Let's start upstairs. We'll finish down here sure. once we know about them. Look at the stairs are as cool. Okay. The stairs are nearly as cool as the... Uh, She's like number one in the last day. So Beautiful. this is just a little two-minute thing where Clara Driscoll, who, des mm. who designed so many of these, you're familiar with Clara, mm -hmm. she was writing a letter to her mother and her sister saying, okay, this is how we make a lamp. Okay, it's, it's just a very quick little thing. Top above, is there something here? That's it, there okay. we go. These are all a little temperament. Perhaps you would like to know how it is done. Thank you. First, I oh, wow, well, thank you. This is what she then wrote to her family. Factory and have it spun in plain white plaster so that it is a perfect facsimile of the finished shape. I sketched the design on it. Then with watercolor, make it look just as the glass will, tracing in the lead lines with dark paint. This your tip of your The next step will be to have a wooden mold spun, then put the design onto it. Then I make little patterns in brass to fit each face. Each pattern has a number on it. The patterns are laid out on an easel, a piece of glass that has had the design traced on it with black paint. The easel is put in front of a window against the light. The glass is selected and cut for each pattern and then stuck in place with wax. The easel is sent to the factory with the mold. Each piece of glass is put on its corresponding space on the mold where they are all fastened together with metal and the whole thing drawn off as a complete shade. It is put in an electric bath and plated with copper, then stained a rich green. Wow. Mm. So they have like this mold that they build around. And all of these are just those shapes as a start. Which way would you like to walk around, left or right? I go to the left. Okay. I like the wisteria when we first walk in. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So pretty. He bought his first for twelve dollars. Like probably a little desk lamp, right? Uh huh. Three thirty one dash three forty one Fourth Avenue in New York. That's where they made it. Hmm. Bronze lamps. That's what this is, I guess, in bronze lamps, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> this almost looks like a front set, I think. I think I might see my favorite. It's my favorite so far. The little one? The little guy. It showcases so many colors. I'm sure you could have had your own, probably custom if you wanted. Oh boy, look at the view from up here too. Yeah. The view from up here is amazing, right? Yes.
What's that? Too. So let's see my favorite food. Where, which one's your favorite so far? I like the small lamp. And so there's definitely that one is, is when I said look like poinsettia is poinsettia. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. Okay. That one. I don't know, it's just my favorite. At Rizzoli's? Yes, and the wife came in and bashed a few of them when she was mad at them. Oh boy. Action. This one's not bad either. This one I really love. I was gravitated towards this one. It's European. How about this witchy pool one? Yeah, it's so intricate, right? Etch metal over like break design. The table lamps, I don't know. I, I like the ones that hang from the ceiling better. Mm. Let's go see the stand up ones. This one is really nice. Right here. It's plain, but it just, it's so pretty. What, what would Oh, that's what they started with. Mm -hmm. That's the. That's where it all the begins. Moment, yeah. They lay. They lay all the pieces of glass in there. And cut the pieces of lead and mush them around, or cut the pieces of brass. Mm -hmm. Then don't they put it in like an acid bath? Yeah. Wait, there's stuff in these drawers. Here's the glass they worked from. Come over here to get filigree. Not filigree. This one. Oh, Jules. Dragonfly shape, Jules. Really? Somebody actually owned these. Wait a second, we missed a lot of drawers. Are you sure did not look at this one? Those are filigrees? The shade, right. 
Oh. These were the ones they actually used. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one here. Yeah, they put those over the top. Mm -hmm. Here. We missed George. Let's see what these guys are. More beads. Oh, patterns. Design drawing for daffodil for this shade. Mm -hmm. Look, it's daffodils. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turtleback. Wow. Look, oh, those are the brass pieces that they would attach to the wooden. Those part. are the templates they started with. Right. Then they cut the glass to match those. Mm -hmm. I love the base on this one. Yeah, twisted stem, it's called. <laughs> There's another drawing. Look at the base on these. Look, I didn't notice this, but these have the glass that lights up as well. Oh, see, the second time around, I'm catching more details. Right. Here, do some more drawers. This to me actually looks like it was personalized or something. See the initials? Mm-hmm. Unless it means T for Tiffany. Maybe this is a church one. I don't see any crosses though. It's called the bookmark pattern. This is a four model. Joe, coming through. The shade paints homage to 15th and 16th century printers through Randall's depicting their marks, which they included in text as a form of authentication. Perhaps the most famous one, an anchor and a dolphin, belongs to the renowned Italian Renaissance printer, Alice Lucius. So this is it here. The anchor and the dolphin. A rug showroom in Tiffany. Carpet showroom? Yeah. Rugs. Rug showroom. Hmm. This is going to be brass. Aha. Uh -huh. Leaves. Sales album. 150 for the small one, 200 for the big one. Huh. Probably add three zeros to it now. Yeah, right? Oh. I like the twisted stems the most. Yeah, that's the one I like them better than these ornate ones. Venetian desk lamp. Do you see that's my favorite top lamp? I would like that top to be on that twist. Oh, you mean the shade? Yeah. Yeah. Not really. They know what they're doing. I should just go along with it. <laughs> Need to, I don't need to tell them how to design their lamps. So this is very interesting to me. The points out over. Mm-hmm. Ready for some more drawers. Uh, I think it's over. Go on. Well, let's see what's in the points out of drawing. Autograph book kept by Emma Stanley, 1903 to 1914. Remember that blue glass that you wanted yesterday with the fish? Mm -hmm. It looks it, look, it looks like this. Yeah. Glass, glass blowing, blowing tools. tools. Used hmm. used them from 1900 to 1920. Nice. Mm. Is this me? Morning glory candlestick. Flower frog. Ooh, so is that martini glass? Uh, Hello. That's not more glass. I'm sorry. Sure. I shouldn't touch the glass. Glass, glass blowing glass. tools. Calipers, pinchers, shears, jacks, and paddles. Yeah, and you could use the back of it for stuff too. This man worked this. Wow. He worked as a glass blower between 1904 and 1918. Okay.
He was the union rep for the firm's glassmakers. Kelly kept a wage book now preserved in the New York Historical Society. They made thirty-five dollars a week. Uh huh. As did the girl, the designer, Sarah. Okay.